Well, the purpose of the referendum was for the people of Kurdistan to make a binding decision about whether they wanted to be independent or to remain part of Iraq. They made that decision. 93% voted for independence. That decision can never be taken away. That's a fact. Now, the question of when that binding decision is actually implemented, we'll see. Uh, obviously, there were some reversals afterwards. Uh, but uh, the reality is you can't keep people in a country they do not want to be part of. You can keep them in for a while. Uh, you can use brutal repression. But everybody knows that what the people of Kurdistan have decided is to leave. And so I think the referendum was a big success because it was a way for the people of Kurdistan to make a decision about their future. And they made, it was a completely free and fair election. Uh, uh, there was no coercion, no allegation of impropriety. Uh, and people turned out in huge numbers. So would, in, in many ways, it was the most successful independence referendum in modern times. Well, <clears throat> if the question is directed at me personally, uh, I, I can assure you that it isn't Peter Galbraith who came up with the idea that the people of Kurdistan wanted to have their own independent state, or it wasn't Peter Galbraith who decided that uh, uh, Iraq uh, had uh, committed genocide against the Kurds. This is, <laughs> this, is, this is a decision of the people of Kurdistan, uh, and President Barzani made the decision to ha ha handle the re have a referendum uh, along not just President Barzani, but the entire Kurdistan leadership. It was adopted by the uh, uh, Kurdistan parliament, and it was a decision of the Kurdistan uh, population by 93%. So the idea that uh, uh, me, who has no official role, could somehow have brought that about, uh, well, I love that idea because, of course, it would make me a very important person. But unfortunately, it's just not true. Uh, there's never a good time to hold a referendum. Uh, the, 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 but the history is very specific. In 2014, uh, uh, the uh, Islamic State uh, took over uh, all of, uh, basically, all of northern, uh, uh, all of Arab Iraq uh, in the north. Um, at that time, the Iraqi army just collapsed. It ran away. It failed in its duty to defend the people of Iraq. It left the people of Kurdistan vulnerable to attack. Uh, and at that time, President Barzani said, look, we have a, a border of 1,030 kilometers with the Islamic State and 30 kilometers with Iraq. Iraq does not exist, and indeed, Iraq did not exist. And at that time, he was going to go ahead and declare independence after consulting widely. The Americans came in and they said, this isn't a good time. And he agreed to the request from Secretary of State John Kerry. Personally, I think he should have gone ahead then, but he was very respectful of the American position. So the Islamic State was defeated. Uh, and at that time, it seemed like the opportune time to do the referendum. And I think it was a good time to do the referendum. Uh, incidentally, I mean, people need to look at the record. Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi kept saying in 2015, 2016, even at the beginning of 2017, it is the right of the people of Kurdistan to determine their future. We hope they'll stay within Iraq, but it's up to them. Only after the defeat of I uh, uh, ISIS and he decided that, oh, well, I can win the election by having defeated ISIS and having... Uh, put the Kurds in their place, uh, that this would be good politics. Then he authorized the use of the Iraqi army and of the PMF against the people of Kurdistan, a total violation of the Iraqi constitution, which says you can't use the Iraqi army internally. He didn't care. He thought it was good politics. Poor Mr. Abadi. It turned out to be very bad politics. He finished in third place, and he's not going to be prime minister again. Uh, well, for Iran, it's, it's obvious. Uh, Iran has uh, more Kurds than uh, Iraq, and it doesn't want to have an independent uh, Kurdistan. Also, it is Iran's closest allies in the world who are the government in Baghdad. From Iran's point of view, they would like their own allies to control all of Iraq, not just part of it, not to have a part of it that's pro-American. So we understand why Iran, uh, Qasem Soleimani, who was in Iraq, 
organized the attack on Kirkuk. That we, we completely understand. The question is, why did Donald Trump uh, permit uh, the, uh, 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 an attack directed by the head of the Al-Quds to use U.S. tanks to attack the Kurds in, in Kirkuk, America's allies, the people who had carried on the fight for a long time just by themselves against the Islamic State. And what made it even worse is the commander who actually carried out the attack was Abu Mahdi Muhandis. Who is Abu Mahdi Muhandis? He was convicted and sentenced to death in absentia in Kuwait for blowing up the American embassy in December 1983. In other words, Donald Trump allowed a convicted terrorist who had attacked an American embassy to use American tanks to attack our friends. This has to be one of the weirdest, most unexplainable decisions in American policy, and only because it's such a strange person who is uh, President of the United States. Uh, of course they aren't because they can't even figure out what to do. Uh, and in that sense, although Donald Trump, incidentally, this decision to allow an, uh, an Iranian-directed tank uh, attack using American tanks took place three days after Donald Trump said he was going to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal. And one of the reasons he was pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal was because of Iran's malign activities in the region. Three days later, he sides with Iran. Uh, but there's no way to, to really fix this. Uh, uh, you know, part of the problem is that the Americans simply do not understand the reality of Iraq. Or they, it's not that they don't understand. It is that they made a huge mistake in 2003. They came in, uh, and as a result of the invasion, through the democratic process, uh, through elections, two parties emerged, Dawa, which Iran had supported for decades, and Skiri, as it was then called, which was founded in Iran. Basically, Iran's allies democratically became the government. And so rather than recognizing the reality and supporting our friends, who are the Kurds, what they have kept doing is keep supporting these pro-Iranian governments in the hopes that somehow they'll be different from what they are. I, I think the Iranians must be very amused, very pleased, that all this American assistance is going to their own allies. It's a, it's a, from their point of view, this is a wonderful development. I, I, I don't know how long Iraq will remain as a state uh, because... Um, well, this, this remains to be seen. But what is clear is a country where a, a sizable part of its population in a geographically defined area almost unanimously doesn't want to be part of the country. You can't keep them there forever. So sooner or later, there will be some event in Iraq that will make an opportunity for the people of Kurdistan to get what they voted for, which is independence. And the vote has already been taken place. It never needs to be held again. The, the verdict, the democratic verdict of the people of Kurdistan is there. And also Iraq, uh, the, the, the Shia majority, you know, continues, will never accommodate the Sunni minority. So all the problems that make Iraq an unworkable state, they remain. So the opportunity will come. And that's why I say the referendum was a big success. The vote has taken place. When the door opens, now Kurdistan will be able to walk through and become an independent country.